Claude just introduced two new AI large language models. One of them is Claude 3.5 Sonnet, but this is a brand new version of it with much better reasoning and coding abilities. And they also introduced a brand new Claude 3.5 Haiku. So far we had Claude 3 Haiku. So this is a lighter weight version of it. And they also introduced a brand new way to use AI called computer use. They have a really nice two minute demo that I'm gonna show you. This is extremely powerful, available today in their API. Claude 3.5 Sonnet, the new version of it, which was my favorite model. I think it's the best model available right now, but it got even a bigger upgrade and it's available to use right now. I'm gonna show you this with some reasoning and coding examples in this video. If you haven't used Claude before, I just wanna show you one thing really quick about the popularity of it versus ChatGPT. So let me just show you this. This is the Claude website, so Claude.ai. It's getting 70 million visits a month, okay? So that's pretty good. But let me go to the ChatGPT.com and show you the same analytics. 3.1 billion visits a month. So even though Claude has been beating ChatGPT for a while now, they have the best model, that 3.5 Sonnet was already the leading large language model compared to GPT-40, it was winning in every benchmark. Now they have an upgraded version, but still ChatGPT is just completely dominating at 3 billion visits a month compared to 70 million visits a month. So that's kind of shocking to me. I use Claude way more than I use ChatGPT. Okay, now back to this, they also introduced something called computer use. So this is available in public beta, experimental option, available inside of API. So this is really meant for developers, but this can direct Claude to use the computer the way people do by looking at a screen, moving a cursor, clicking buttons and typing text. Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the first frontier AI model to offer computer use in public beta. And they have this demo right here and I'll show you this in a second and then we'll jump in and test out Claude. I'll show you their benchmarks, obviously, Every time we have benchmarks, we got to test it for ourselves to see if it keeps up. But look at this Claude 3.5 Sonnet, this new version of it. And this is the Haiku model. Comparing it to the best models available right now, you see GPT-01, by the way, is missing from this. That's the reasoning model from OpenAI because it's pretty limited in usage right now. So these are for more for everyday use. But I wish they did compare this to the 01 model because they're saying Claude 3.5 Sonnet is a better reasoning model. Well, GPT-40 is not the reasoning model from OpenAI. The O1 model is, so that's not in this benchmark, so keep that in mind. But compared to GPT-40 and compared to Gemini 1.5 Pro, which is the best version of Google Gemini, completely beating these models. And if you go to Claude.ai, you'll see a new model here. This is Claude 3.5 Sonnet right now. You could choose it here. Claude 3.5 Haiku is gonna be rolling out in the next few weeks, not available right now. But this is obviously their best model. It's gonna beat Claude 3.5 Haiku too. So this is the one we wanna go ahead and test out. And I have some new prompts here. I wanna test it out. We're gonna test out some coding. Before that, let me just show you this demo right here. This is for computer use available inside of API. So this, this is really meant for developers, but as a non-developer, the power of this kind of blew my mind. I think this is gonna be a huge leap for AI once this becomes kind of mainstream. So I'm Sam and I'm one of the researchers here at Anthropic. Computer use is something that we felt was gonna be important for a while now. And so today we're gonna to be talking about a very early version we have of computer use and talking through a representative example of the things we think is gonna be useful for. We're gonna be going through a quick demo today. In this fictional demo, a customer, in this case, the Ant Equipment Company, has come to us and asked us to fill out a vendor request form. The data I need to fill out this form is scattered in various places on my computer. What we're gonna do is ask Claude to look at the spreadsheet, check if Ant Equipment is in there, and if not, move over to the CRM and try and find some more information there. Once it has this data, Claude's gonna then fill out the form for us and hopefully transfer the information across to the, the vendor form. The first thing that's gonna happen is Claude's gonna start taking screenshots of my screen and quickly realizes that the Ant Equipment Company isn't actually in the spreadsheet. So the first thing it does is it swaps over to a CRM and searches for the company we're interested in.
Luckily, we get a search match and Claude then starts scrolling through the page looking for all the information it needs to fill out this form. Claude then autonomously starts transferring the information across without me having to do anything. And goes through the steps and fills out all the information needed. And then submits the form. This example is representative of a lot of drudge work that people have to do. This is available in the API. We're excited for people to try it and we should expect things to get a lot better over the coming months. Now, that's the AI that I think we've been promised. AI agents that could do things for you on your computer. You open up different pages, you open up different spreadsheets, it scrolled through different pages, it typed out text, it filled out a form, it successfully completed an entire task, right? So that is where AI agents are gonna lead us. Right now, this is one of the best use cases I've seen for it. Obviously, early demo, experimental beta, but computer use could be really powerful. So if you're a developer, let me know what you think of it. If you're testing it out, it's available right now in the API. I'll dig into it a little bit, but I'll save that for a different video. Right now, I wanna test out Claude 3.5 Sonnet, the new version of it. Let's go ahead and do some reasoning and logical testing. For writing and everything else, I already use Claude, so I've already compared that with GPT-40, and it's my preferred model for summarizing text, for writing articles, for all kinds of different use cases, marketing. But right now, for logical reasons, O1 is obviously the best model, but let's see if we could get some of the same results. I tested O1 in detail in a different video. I'm gonna use some of the early reasoning prompts from that video, but I have some brand new prompts and uh, riddles and things like that I wanna test out with this new model. How many R's in a strawberry? Something that large language models struggle with. Oh, this is interesting the way you laid it out. There are three R's in strawberry, which is right. So pass there. Okay, I'll start a new chat. Which number is bigger, 9.11 or 9.9? .9? The O1 one model gets this one right. Let's see. So 9.9 .9 is greater than 9.11. Okay, good. You got that right, and it kind of walks you through all the steps that it needed to take to get that answer right. Now the next one, what comes once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never in a thousand years? The letter M appears once here, twice here, and he never in the thousand years. Got that right. Two fathers and two sons went fishing. Each caught one fish, but when they returned, they only had three fish. How is this possible? Okay, let's see what we get there. Let me think through this step by step. So it's kind of using similar chain of thought prompting that the O1 model uses in the background, but it spells it out for you. So it says it seems like there's four people at first, two sons and two fathers, but it breaks it down on how that's not the case. And there's one grandfather, so that's one father. And then he has a son who is also a father and a son who caught one fish and the grandson who is just one son caught one fish. So the answer is right. And he walked through the reasoning here and it makes sense. Let's try a more challenging one. You're given 25 horses and a racetrack where only five horses could race at any given time. You do not have a stopwatch and you need to find the three fastest horses. What's the minimum number of races that you need to run to determine the top three horses? Now, again, this is using the same step by step. So that same chain of thought prompting, it looks like this is how it's trying to get to that answer. It's walking us through all the steps and I know the answer is seven. Okay, wow, it did get that right. And it spelled out all the different steps it needed to walk through in order to get that all right. But that's impressive, it got that one right too. I wanna see if he knows how to count words. So I'm just gonna give it one more riddle. What came first, chicken or the egg? Now the scientific answer is actually quite clear. The egg came first. The first chicken egg was laid by a bird that was almost but not quite a chicken. Good answer. Now let's see how many words in this response. Okay, this is something brand new. I've never seen any AI model answer like this, but look how it's counting. It's just counting one word at a time like this. So let me just copy and paste this right here into Microsoft Word and see the actual word count. This one said 88 and Microsoft Word says 107. I wonder why that didn't get it right. 
Okay, I just manually counted and I also got 107. So Microsoft Word is accurate, but I don't know exactly what went wrong here because it looks like it went all the way down to the very end behind this right here is the end. And it started with, this is a fascinating, okay, so not sure, but it did not get the counting right, just like every other model hasn't been able to get the counting of words right. Let's try a couple of different coding examples. So one I run a lot of times just to kind of keep it consistent across different models is a game of checkers. And I just say, write a game of checkers in Python that I could run on my Mac. Okay, the first version it gave me, it just ran it inside of this little terminal app. So that's not what I wanted. So sometimes I notice with different models, sometimes they give you this version if you don't really spell out that you want this as a standalone app. So this one, the very first time it gave me this. So let me ask it, I just asked it to give me this as a standalone app and it gave me new code. Okay, let's see how this one works. Let's move the red piece. Oh, that's not right. I have not even played and <laughs> it's already not functioning. Okay, let me just try one more follow-up prompt. It looks nice, but it's obviously not working, which is not great. I usually get a much better result in the very first prompt out of GPT-40. I'm gonna say the game logic is broken, get some new code. Okay, let's try this again. Red's turn, let's click there, let's move this guy. Okay, now it seems to work. Oh, nope, I still can't take a piece. So the only thing that it did was get the starting rights, but it doesn't seem to be able to take a piece on either side. So that was three different prompts. I really haven't needed to give GPT models I think I even got the Llama model, the new Llama model to even take it a step further here. So not quite what I needed to get out of this example. Let's try one more. This one I won't tell it to write in Python, write code for a game of Tetris I can run on my Mac as a standalone app. Let's see if we get something useful here. And by the way, if you're a developer, let me know in the comments section if you have a very specific example of a prompt I could use to kind of test coding for an upcoming thing and what I should look for exactly. And I'll try it for my next comparison video. Okay, this seems to be working really well, actually. Let me just fast forward a bit. Okay, let me see if it could actually clear a level here. All right, perfect. So this seems to be working really well. Let me see what happens if you lose the game. Okay, perfect, game over, exactly how it should end. And it's a win on the Tetris side, but checkers, it was a fail. And I was pretty much these days could get any model to take that a little bit further. So we'll go ahead and test this out a little bit more. And I'm gonna dive into the computer use a little bit too. Hopefully I'll have a video about that coming up, but let me know what you think of this new model. And let me know if you like the GPT models more or if the Claude models more. Claude 3.5 Sonnet has been my number one model and now we have a better version of it. In coding though, I don't know. Let me know what your choice is when it comes to coding. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.